why you can't stop loving the narcissist. And I know that's really hard to admit and say out loud. And there's no shame in that and there's no judgment because this is one of the hardest things to just detach from someone who has been so significant in many ways in your life. And it's really hard to kind of piece together exactly what has happened, why it's happened, just even just to make sense of this experience. So I really wanted to just unpack this in this video. If you are facing this, I'm gonna be talking about why. Why it's so hard to stop loving a narcissist. Watch this video. Hello everyone and welcome back. I really hope that you're all doing really well. Um, and I know this video is going to be quite an emotional one. It's going to be one that's probably going to touch your heart. I'm going to talk about many different things in this video. If you, I just want to put a trigger warning. If you are someone that is newly just come out of a relationship with a narcissist, I would say maybe save this video and watch it a little bit later when you're a little bit stronger emotionally because there's a lot of things that I'm going to be talking about in this video that may trigger you and obviously I don't want that to happen. I don't, I want you to be safe. But before I get into the video, just quickly wanted to mention that I do go live on this channel once a week and if you have any questions or there's something on your mind, then I would say join the live because you can ask your question directly in the live chat and you could possibly get it answered. And also added to the fact we have a really supportive community who are so kind and compassionate, who are also in this live and are so willing to offer their support. So guys, if you are interested in joining, please see the description box below. So, so my friends, why is it so hard to stop loving a narcissist, knowing exactly all the horrible things that they have done to you? How have they been so despicable? How they have made you feel? How they have ruined so much for you? How they have made you feel so insignificant, like you don't matter, yet, yet, you still love them? I wanted to say that there's no shame in this. And I want to validate you just so that you know that this isn't easy to just let go, just throw away. Because there's been so much emotional investment, psychological investment in this interaction. Not that you had possibly even wanted it, but because you are made to feel that, all right? You see, the narcissist is, this is a tricky one to explain. The narcissist is intense. I think that is the word that I can call this. It's very intense and it really, in a way, really magnifies the connection on a soul level in this interaction. And I think in this interaction with a narcissist, it magnifies our feelings to such a level that is so astronomical. Like we will feel things that we have never felt before. It's intense. So sometimes we can actually mistake this for love, soulmate love, because of its intensity, because you are so drawn to this person. They are magnetizing. But throughout this relationship, it is fought with so much ups and downs, so many letdowns and disappointments. And actually added to that, there is confusion. So what happens is because of this push and pull dynamic that exists within these types of relationships, we form this trauma bond to this person, added to the fact that we are so betrayed in this relationship that we actually put our own needs to one side. We kind of like don't recognize it or we remain silent. We don't do you know what? We don't voice what is going on because we're not allowed. We are forced to stay silent. So all of this we keep down within us and we feel as though actually we are not important, that, that we have to put the narcissist first, that their needs are more important than our own. And so this push and pull dynamic, I love you, I don't love you, I love you, I don't love you, they pull you in and push you away like all the time. 
you form this bond to the narcissist and it is a traumatic bond. And this still remains even after the relationship has ended. And added to the fact to that is also an energetic bond that is formed with the narcissist. And this deepens this attachment that we have to them. And this is why it makes it really difficult for us to stop loving someone because actually what we do see is the narcissist's damaged in a child. And it's almost as though we want to help, as though we almost want to make it better for them so that they don't feel this pain. Because we are kind, we are compassionate, we're empathetic individuals. We don't want this person, someone who we love, someone who we respect and care about. We don't want them to feel bad. We don't want them to feel awful. We want to make their lives happy. So this again entrenches this trauma bond and this energetic bond that we share with the narcissist. So it makes it really hard to detach from them. And sometimes because of the intensity of this attachment that we have to the narcissist, we feel like we are in love with them. We feel as though we have lost someone that we really care about, that we really, really wanted to have this experience with. But that's just it. Are you seeing it for what it really is? Or are you still living in that fantasy that this person who you want to see them as, who this person you believe to be. Because I feel like that keeps us stuck in this scenario with the narcissist, the fact that we are seeing them for who we thought they are. And this is very easily done because right at the beginning of the relationship, when you got to know them, you were getting love bombs, you were getting mirrored. You know, this person was telling you that they are your soulmate. You felt very drawn, magnetized to them. So, as human beings, we form first, first opinions about this person. We form judgments the first time we ever meet someone. And that really actually stays. So first impressions really are important because that actually stays with us. So when the narcissist begins to change throughout the course of this relationship, you're like, oh, that's okay. Um, you know, maybe they're tired. Maybe they're stressed. We, we make excuses for them. Because we remember how they were right at the beginning of this interaction. Now they have changed. So we become skewed. We become unstable in our way of thinking and the way that we see them. That's where this betrayal bond begins. Because we are also betrayed. Because what they are showing us is not really a true representation of who they are. They are someone completely different. They want to make us believe that we're this amazing, that they are this amazing person. And that we have got it wrong. So when they give you excuses, when they gaslight you, when they are manipulating you, they remind you of how wonderful they are, all the things that they have done for you, because they want to trick your mind into believing that they are that person. So you're constantly reminded that they are this person right at the beginning of the relationship. So this skews your way of seeing them. This is why this deepens this, this kind of attachment that you have to them. That's why it's really difficult to stop loving them because you, what, when you're in that mindset, when you're thinking, oh no, I've got this wrong. I've got this wrong because you are tricked into thinking that. And you're thinking, no, they're not like this. They are not this person that I'm thinking that they are. Because you're reminded of actually who they are when they were right at the beginning, when they were mirroring and love bombing you. So it stops you from seeing the truth. It stops you from seeing the reality of this situation because somebody is skewing your vision. Deep inside, you feel this niggling feeling, this, this heaviness on your heart because you know what is happening is wrong. You know on some level that it's wrong, yet you have these intense feelings towards the narcissist. I don't think that's love. I think that's intensity and confusion and possibly even lust, but it's not love. That's not what love should feel like. Love should feel safe. Love should feel encompassing, where it brings out the best version of you, that actually you are not judged. These emotions that you have, they are intense, but also very confusing. 
because this situation doesn't make sense. It, it's very difficult to try and actually really understand what happened in this scenario. And when, there, when there's no navigation, when there's no understanding, that's where it makes it very difficult. So it will take time. It will take time, my friends, and you will be able to move forward from this. It doesn't mean that you're going to be stuck in this, in this kind of situation that you are now. You will move forward from it. And what I will say to you is take your time, but really see the reality of it, because it could be that you have this attachment to the narcissist that is based around trauma, fear and betrayal. And because it's so intense, it can feel like love because all of these emotions are brought to the, the kind of the forefront. So really take your time to work through this. And if you are speaking with a professional, you know, I would say carry on and just maybe mention this fact that this is how you are feeling. And maybe it is triggering you and maybe reminding you of an attachment that you had with maybe someone in your life as a child. It could be this kind of bond that you've had. So maybe explore that if you are working with a professional. Um, or if you're doing this alone, maybe journal this. Maybe look at this and really reflect on it by writing it down. So guys, if you are going through this, please know that I also do offer one-to-one -one support and consultations. If you are interested, please see the description box below. I've also got a journal club and a mentorship. And if you're interested, then I would say, please see the description box below. I've also got a Discord server, which is a community of like-minded individuals, people who have gone through similar experiences like you have and want to kind of like work through it. This is a safe space for you to share your thoughts and ideas. And if you're interested in joining, please see the description box below. Guys, I really hope this video has helped and not triggered you too much. And um, I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.